And it's coming up right now. There we are. Welcome everyone. To game number one in the set over here. These are actually not the correct names, of course. This is Lepaget versus Dragon in Bear's Shadow. So, this is also Ternova Duos. Quarterfinals, best of five as well. What do we get? We're going to have, first off, Sito on the left hand side. We have Anata playing towards the south. Meanwhile, Chris will be playing up north towards the right hand side. And Dragonstar is going to be playing uh, to the very right over here as well on the teal color. So, starting with civilizations real quick. We'll see for the blue and teal players who are very close to each other. We have Saracens and we have Magyars for Chris and for Dragonstar respectively. That means that Dragonstar will be playing with a civilization that gets a discount on Scout 9 unit production, which can be really good. He's going to have also Free Forge and Iron Castle and Blast Furnace, as well as... Let's check. We're going to have for Magyars also villagers who can kill Predators with one strike, which on this map specifically is not going to be that relevant. For the team bonus, they will also have two extra line of sight and foot archer units, and that's going to be about it for Magyars. Meanwhile, Chris playing with Saracens will get cheaper markets and trade resources for cheaper. Yeah, and the, sorry, this is not the case at all. <laughs> this is just game number one. Sorry about that. So yeah. Uh, this is just because we have uh, some players which we had already the same before, so the score will stay the same, which is uh, actually handy 99% of the time from Capture Edge, but just for this set happened to break the scoreboard a little bit for, for, for a different tournament, of course. But anyway, we're going to have, uh, besides uh, all the stuff that we already talked about, Magyars, for Chris over here playing with Saracens, he's going to have the cheaper markets for sure. Yeah, trade resources for cheaper. He also have on top of that 10 extra HP on the Camel Rider units. And then for the team bonus, 2 bonus damage. For these guys, right, for, for Foot Archer units against buildings. While on the left hand side, finally, we're going to take a look at Sito and Anath of Civilizations. Now, you can see Sito over here is being extremely annoying. He's just trying to get the goats. He cannot do it. Chris is going to keep uh, possession of these. And for those of you who are not familiar with the map, don't worry. We are going to talk about it in just one moment. But let's finish talking about the steps first. So, for Sito playing with Franks over here, is going to get farm upgrades for free. Then on top of that, we also see for the red player. We're going to have 20% uh, extra HP on cavalry units starting in the fuel age, as well as 25% cheaper castles. They will also get a 15%. They will also get 15% faster working foragers, and for the team bonus, two extra line of sight for nine line units. Meanwhile, Anata playing with Ethiopians will get faster attacking archer units. He's gonna have also 200 uh, resources, extra resources for free upon reaching a new age. 100 wood and one, 100 food and 100 gold, as well as the pikeman upgrade for free. And then for the team bonus, we'll see for Ethiopians as well. Yeah, for the team bonus, we're going to see for Ethiopians as well. Three extra line aside, and Alpos and Towers. So, let's, uh, yeah. Let's take a look at the map for those of you who might not be familiar with it. This is a very, very interesting one, by the way. And you might have, you might have realized already. There is no wood over here. Where is the wood? Well, I'll tell you where the wood is. Nowhere. <laughs> Actually, we do have wood over here. It's just not going to be in the shape of trees. Instead, what we have is piles of lumber that you can see over here. And the piles of lumber are going to provide 100,000 wood per tile. So this is going to be for the red player, for instance, 200,000 wood. That he's got to protect with his life. Because if he gets pushed away from here. He's going to have to move to a different one. Which can be farther away. And can be harder to protect. It's not going to be that big of a deal. Once we get to the castle age. Because he can go for extra TC. So we could see the red player go for a TC over here. Once he gets to the castle age. Right. Or the TC over here. And provide protection to extra resources. 
But for the time being, it's very important for him to protect this. And this map being so open because of the lack of wood lines. It can be kind of rough, especially when you're going to be facing Magyars. When you're going to be facing freaking Saracens, right? So anyway. Hey, Rockbird. Cheers to you too as well. And to all of Mexico. Hope you guys are enjoying the tournament so far. We have had a lot of content. As a matter of fact, if you do exclamation mark VODs. V-O-D-S, exclamation mark VODs. And... Uh, you go to the Terranova Duels playlist, you'll see that it's got the most videos from any tournament that I have covered ever since I started archiving the the tournaments that I cover on my stream, which is saying something, right? We have had so much content from Terranova Duels, it's fantastic. And on that note, big shout out to the Mad Cather for sponsoring and making this tournament possible. Big shout out to Huevo Coyoto who's put so much time and effort into making this tournament happen as well. While Terranova itself, as a concept, is my little baby from all the way back 2020. It simply wouldn't be possible if it weren't because of those two guys, so big, big shout out to them. So yeah, Fury is coming up early for Dragonstar and for Sito. We'll see scouts coming out very soon. Yeah, and if you take a look at the TC location for everyone... We're gonna see... It seems like Dragonstar is going to be the only player defending the pile of lumber over here. He's also managed to get a mail up right next to the pile of food, which is another feature of the map. The pile of food is going to provide the same food as if you had six piles of individual berries, but it's going to be condensed into a single pile. So it's 750 as opposed to 125 each. I'm really sure Sito's actually taking advantage of it. Where, where is the, the pile of food? I think he might have already run out of it, and he's going for the Ibex uh, over here. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't see the, the berry, so I think he already took it. What do caravans do? Caravans are, are just a pretty unit, and they are going to allow you to scout. You have a camel, you have the caravan, and only they allow you to scout, but that's all you can do. The berries do have more food. The piles of lumber do have more wood, and then all the white spots over here will feature relics guarded by Gaia as well. So you need to clean up those units before you can collect the relics. Most of the food's going to come from, from farming. Hey, Ben Machine! Thank you! I appreciate it! Oh, the TC wasn't berries. That makes sense. Yeah, because I didn't see it. And I think I saw him go for the meal just for the Avex. So that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Hey. Just going for stone already. Interestingly enough. Uh, he kind of needs it. You know, once again, in the castle age, it's not going to be much of an issue because he can go for extra TCs. But in the fuel age, with this being so open. And once again, especially against potentially Magyars, Saracen units coming forward. You're going to want to have some sort of defense for your economy. And towers is going to be a fantastic way to protect it. So down south over here, Anatop's going for a tower already. Right next to the gold, fantastic. Big shout out to Anatop, by the way. Uh, he sent... He sent the games. So that we could all... Watch the set now. Castle is coming up for Anatop already. And Sito should be on his way up very, very soon. The only player who's not going to be anywhere near close to going up to the castle age is Dragonstar. He's just been going for scouts right now and he'll be putting pressure, but for the time being, he's not done too much. He cannot do anything around Anatop's base as he already has a tower, so up north over here we're gonna see Chris trying to push the villagers from Sito away from towers, and it seems like he'll be able to do it. There's only one archer over here though, Sito should be able to take care of this. And he most likely will. Meanwhile, I'm still waiting for Dragonstar to bring the scouts over, but he's not going for it! He's going down south! He's not sending the scouts up north! Or over to the left hand side. Uh oh. There you are. He's roaming around. I, I, man, I do know. I don't think he can find any damage anymore. At the very least, he was able to push villagers away from the pile of food. But you take a look at that. From 750, it's gone down to 42 food. He's almost depleted the, the pile of food. And Drowns of Scouts over here achieved nothing. Just delayed him to the castle age. 
Sito instead, he's got, you know, scouts coming out. He should be on his way to the Castle Age much, much earlier compared to Dragonstar. Yeah, yeah. Dragonstar does have a larger amount of scouts, of course, but once again, so far, it's not really been particularly useful. And I'm still pretty curious as to why he's not gone over the left-hand side. You would imagine the teams have been communicating and that Chris would have told already Dragonstar about the... The location of Sito, right? That's gonna be one village going down for Dragonstar already. And overall, it's gonna be the first villager pick. Great tournament, I remember results come back in this map, it was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that was one of the most interesting sets for sure. Salt uh, actually ended up playing two games on this map and, and that, that, was a, that was a good one, yeah. I remember. Good stuff, man. It's gonna keep on roaming around. Giant Star now has gotta defend against Ito Scouts plus crossbows from Anatop already. How does Gathering Wood work on this map? You get piles of lumber, which you can see over here with these planks. It's going to be 100,000 wood per tile so you gotta make sure to protect it and fortunately Dragonstar does have a TC right next to one so he's going to be fine over here but against crossbows it's going to be tough because they can already outrange the TC right you could see the crossbows uh, moving over to the left hand side for instance over here and and then just push the the villagers away from wood potentially good defense though Chris is bringing crossbows himself now Castle is on the way for Sito, and as expected, Jowser is nowhere near having enough resources to go up, so so far the baguette being able to survive really, really nicely. Let's see if the surround over here can make anything happen. My prediction for this set? Uh oh boy, <laughs> that is not good for, for Anatop, I'll tell you that much. It's kind of rough, right? Let me take a look at Anatop's elo. Let me check. I think he's gone up quite a bit. He's an incredible team player. Rank 117 over here. You know, I guess I would probably have to give the edge to Dragon in Bear's Shadow by a little bit. Mm, but... Yeah, I'm not too sure. Mostly because... For Le Baguette, we have Anatop over here, and communication might not be quite as efficient as if we had Sito and Margugu, for instance. But that's mostly it. I, I think it's definitely possible for either team to take the game over here, to take the set over here. And of course, remember that tomorrow we'll have a semi final as well. There you are. Beautiful. Good defense. Still though, Antop's push over here is very, very strong. Fortunately, Dragonstar has not really been taking any extra damage, but this stage is kind of remarkable. Good defense over here as well for, for Sito. Should be able to hold on over here, cleans up the archers. Military counts start to look very one-sided in favor of Le Baguette. Everyone's already gone up. I don't see anybody going for any extra TCs though. As a matter of fact, it seems like Dragonstar had to sell the resource in order to go up. Meanwhile, Sito doesn't really have any stone either himself, so he might have sold it. Nah, 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 he just, he just went for the towers. When is the final? Well, the final is going to take place whenever the player is scheduled for the finals, but it's not going to be possible to have the semi-final uh, tomorrow and the grand finals on Wednesday as we wanted to do it. Because, um, 
the final the, the finals that we already have defined, Wipe of Palace will not be able to play on Wednesday. And because we have Thursday through Sunday Battle Africa, we're probably going to have uh, the grand final take place next weekend. Or next week, rather. It could be on Monday, immediately after Battle Africa. It could be on Friday, immediately before the final weekend of Battle Africa. We'll see. Yeah, wow. That's going to be GG right there. Lebegit completely dominating over here after making the transition to the Castle Age. So the villagers going down. And Chris calling the GG right there. So if we take a look at the achievements. We'll see a very nice KD over here for Sito. A better than 4 to 1. Meanwhile for Anatop of course he does get a 2 to 1 KD over here. And the baguette are looking strong for game number 1. They are getting ahead. We take a look at the economy. And we'll see a much stronger economy over here for Sito and for Anatop. Wow, good job. Well game number 1 was not too long. We'll jump into game number two in a, in a moment. For the time being, let's go back and take a look at the, the maps. With a baguette getting game number one on Um Al Sabim, game number two is going to take place either in Frozen Forest or Tenochtitlan. And welcome everyone then to game number two in the set, Lebaget versus Dragon in Bear's Shadow. Terranova duels, colors over here seem to be kind of messed up, so we are going to switch uh, Sito over to red, and that's going to make it a little bit better. Taking a look at the civilizations, then the matchups over here up north, we're going to have Sito playing with Chinese and Dragon Star playing with Lithuanians. With Chinese and Lithuanians over here, will Sito is going to begin with three extra villagers, although he will begin with 200 less food and 50 less wood compared to other civilizations. Besides that, though, he will have on the TC five extra population support and five higher um, line of sight. Besides that, we also see for Chinese, we're going to get for them cheaper upgrades. Obtain 15 and 20% cheaper in the Feudal Castle and Imperial Age as well for the team bonus. They will provide also 10% extra food on farms for free. And once again, he'll be facing Dragonstar, and Dragonstar playing with Lithuanians over here will have instead 150 extra food upon start on the game. He's going to have on top of that 10% faster movement skirm and spear line units. We'll see for Lithuanians as well. It's nice. We'll see for Lithuanians as well. Let's see. One extra attack on Knights and Lycha units per each relic garrison up to four relics. Well, for the team bonus, monasteries work 20% faster for them. So, give me one second. I need to do something real quick. And then we'll keep on talking about the saves. One moment. Okay, thank you so much for your patience. Let's take a look at the rest of the civilizations over here. The players down south. We'll have then Chris playing with Mayans. And he'll be the one facing Anatop, who is playing at this point in time with, uh, with Hans. We have seen this map already before. While it seems like it's close, it actually isn't. For starters... If you take a look at the way the map generates, you will notice that alongside, the, 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 you know, that along the woods, it's open everywhere, and we have ice, right? So this eye over here is going to make it impossible for you to to wall this off. You you cannot wall that. Besides, be because you can see this ice being along the wood over here for the entire map. You cannot really wall your lumberjacks, and you cannot even go for the lumber camp right next to the wood, because it's simply not possible for you to protect it. So while it seems like it's kind of close, it's actually very, very open. 
So for the civilizations that we are missing, uh, over here for Mayans, we are going to get one extra villager upon starting the game for, for Chris. We're going to have also a raid coming up from Pablito. It's appreciated. Hi, Pablito. Thank you so much for the raid. And welcome, everyone, guys, to the quarterfinal, the missing quarterfinal of Terra Nova Duos. We are in game number two already. La Baguette with a 1-0 lead over Dragon in Bear's Shadow. Fantastic. And yeah. If we check this, there is a, a Drash already coming up. Couldn't really talk about the rest of the Sips, but yeah, for Mayans, they're going to get cheaper archers, longer lasting resources, the extra villager, but fewer resources, and then cheaper walls for the team bonus. Finally, on top with Hans, we'll get cheaper cavalry archer units starting in the Castle Age onwards. Then, on top of that, uh, we will also have for them extra accuracy and trebuchets, and uh, no need to build houses, right? They do begin with. Less wood because of it, though. So, there we are. Gotta be careful over here. The militias are coming over. And once again, you cannot really quick wall your villagers here because of the ice. It's surrounding all the wood lines. So, this is really open. And it's going to be very important for the players to get some good micro going. Hey, <laughs> there you go, yeah. By the way, guys, quick announcement. This is the last week for anybody who might be interested in submitting a map for RMS Cup 2 to, to submit, of course, as the deadline is going to be on the 19th already, so we are only six days ago. Uh, we are only, sorry, six days away from that. Yeah. Just something to keep in mind for those of you who might be interested in participating. That's why we had the map script in command up for so long. We take a look down south. We're going to see some militias coming over from Anatop. Against Chris. Chris is already aware of this. I'm not really sure if you'll be able to defend too much though. He's about to get to the fuel age and he's got three villagers getting a barracks up. So he'll start going for archers most likely. Can we feature uh, the center? I mean, you do have some fish over here. You could probably go for this, but it's not going to be worth it. It's, it's a very small amount of fish. And I think you might only be able to go for a dock over here. I'm actually not really sure. I don't think anyone has tried. I, I, I don't think I have seen anybody ever try to do that. It's probably not worth it regardless of the ability or inability to go for for buildings. Most likely you cannot build a mill for sure. The, the dock I'm not really sure but Anyway. Not going to be any practical though. It seems we are having that bug again where the attack sounds do not play through until we mess up with the slider. Yeah, from what I can see, so let's fix that real quick. There we go. With these kinds of maps, not in the map pool, this looks cool. It looks cool, and, and it's been great. This is only one of 35 amazing maps we have had for Terranova Duos. There we go. Can we see a villager go down over here? We already have Loom, so it's unlikely. There's a Spearman over here as well for Jonsar to defend himself. And, you know, when he was going forward, he wasn't able to get too much damage done over here at all. He's got one militia left. Let's actually take a look. He, he wasn't able to get a single villager kill. And this militia is already 1 HP, so it's going down for sure instead. The threat right now is coming from Sito for sure. Against Dragon Star, and he's going to get a villager. He does. He got the bill. We might see another villager go down over here, most likely. Will we? I think we will. Ah, oh, that is so close. He managed to save the one villager over here, but already Dragon Star taking the first loss. Beautiful stuff. Oh. 
There we go. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of pressure coming out from the bucket. They already got a village down. Now we have archers coming over from Anatop. We have scouts from Sito. Might see a villager go down over here. Yes, sir, we will. Second villager loss already for Dragonstar. Beautiful unit control for the Baguette, playing as one over here. Defending the archers with the scout, defending the scouts with the archers. Getting some nice picks. Jones starts going for skirmishes right now. And it's rough. He was the one going for scouts earlier. Uh, sorry, he was the one going for militias earlier. Now he's making a transition to archers and skirmishers. So only getting fletching now is kind of rough though. He's already been taking a lot of heat. Yeah, you take a look at Ale Baguette instead, and they're gonna be, for the most part, chilling. So March is coming over from Chris. Doesn't seem like he'll be able to get much of anything done over here. Xanathal's been chasing him away with his own range units as well, and now we're gonna see the one scout from Sito cleaning these units up. Well played. Yeah, now down south, Anatop's the one putting pressure against Chris once again. So, so far, it's been looking pretty darn good for Ale Baguette. They've cleaned up every four every four unit. Johnny Bear Shadow sent over. There we go. And the other way around, it's not been the case. The Dragon in Bear Shell has been able to defend fine over here. It's always been very, very hard for them to keep to keep up with all the pushes from the Baguette. Now we have a second wave of units coming over from Anatop and Sita, right around Chris's base. Up north on the left hand side, Dragon Stars coming over. You know, we have Chris over here as well with archers. Honestly, this is just not going to be strong enough. We already have scouts over here from Sito. Would scale Barden armor, so he should be able to clean these units up, and he most likely will. Yeah, yeah. Good job. Meanwhile, on the right hand side, well, we still have the scouts over here from Sito. And where are the archers from Anatop? He had some archers over here. Yeah, he's got them going back. He's trying to group them up with the reinforcements coming forward as well, so this army is going to be so much stronger over here for Anatop. He'll also be the first player on his team going after the Castle Age, as will be Chris. Right now, the lead is there for Le Baguette, although it's very, very small. Nice defensive tower from Sito as well. Can he get this one up though? That's the question. It's a lot of pressure over here, and we finally have a decent amount of archers from Johnny Bear's Shadow to put pressure with. But there we go, the tower's already up. And it's going to provide some defenses for the time being. Meanwhile, on the right hand side, Anatop's still roaming around freely over here. Doesn't seem like Chris is going to defend himself too effectively over here too much against these archers. We don't really have too many units. So the moment Anatop gets to the castle age, and he's going to be there a little bit sooner compared to Chris, he's going to have so many extra units over here. To go for Crossman, to go for Elite Skirmishers, Balkin Arrow, right? Well, well, if you take a look at Chris's units forward, he's got a very small amount of units. And also, Sito sending the scouts around. There we go. Beautiful. Good defense over here, by the way, from Sito. He's got on a second tower up, so he can push these archers away. Meanwhile, Anatop sending the crossbows over to the north. He's about to finish researching leather archer armor and elite skirmishers. So not only is this plus two attack and plus two range on these guys, but also plus two defenses.
There we go. Beautiful. Left hand side. Yeah, drones are roaming around still. Very far away from the castle age. We take a look at Eco KD and so far, Lebegit has not taken a single Eco loss. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is fantastic for Mana Top. Cutting these units up, the defensive units from Chris, means that now he's gonna have kind of free range against Dragon Star, who is still kind of stuck in the fuel age. Meanwhile, both players from the Baguette are already up. So if Mana Top can clean this up, and he should be able to, he's got skirmishers, right? Then what do we have for Dragon Star to keep on defending himself? Not too much. He's been trying to put pressure up north. He's getting cleaned up! And yes, sir, there's no pressure coming out from Dragon Star anymore. I don't see any pressure coming out from Chris anywhere either. The, the units he sent up north to defend Dragon Star with are getting cleaned up over here. And Anatops play an incredible game. We have a second wave of units down south over here from the yellow player to put pressure against, against Chris with. Now with Knights coming over into the mix over here, this will be just so much harder. For Drowning in Bear's Shadow to defend. Now, finally, Dragon starts going up to the Cassage. But guess what? Remember, guys, you cannot really quick wall your villagers on wood. You can only quick wall your gold miners over here if you play your cards right. It's going to be quite APM intensive, but you can do it. However, for Lumberjacks, that is simply not possible because of the ice. So, these knights are going to be significantly scarier. Yeah, yeah. He's going to the tower right now. There's nothing. For Jaron start to prevent the tower from crumbling. You will see more knights coming over by the minute. He should be able to go up north as well if he was aware of that. He would certainly want to target those villagers. And Dragon Star had not gotten spotted yet. But now, in sending the villagers over to the TC, he gets spotted. We see this tower about to get completely cleaned up. We still have a good amount of knights over here for Sito to work on his own against Dragon Star. Meanwhile, down south, once again, Anatop just keeps on putting more and more pressure with skirmishers. Yes, but a good amount of units is still going to be enough for him to get villagers with. So there we go. Villagers going down over here for Dragon Star. Big struggle for Dragon in Bear's Shadow. Certainly looking like it might be over right now. I agree, yes. So we'll see. Going back, there's nothing over here for them to defend against. It seems like they are just going to try and push both at the same time. Uh, they're going to try and push Chris both at the same time. We'll see. It's amazing that Anatop's been able to keep these units alive for so long, though, to be fair. Just gotta be careful. Here we are. And we see some skirmishes going down over here for for Anatop for sure. Finally, John has got an access to, to knights himself. But here come the knights. Francito getting a good run going against Chris. If they can clean these units up, then we're going to have no crossbows at hand. Where are the, the rest of the units? He's got a second wave of crossbows coming up from the north. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. We still have crosses over here from Mana Top in greater numbers. So these knights could potentially just roam around, right? Especially as Mana Top's got the hill advantage. These knights could potentially roam around and go right after the wood lines. I don't know. Just probably the meat shield over here. Looking good. With a 30C coming out for Sito, actually, we'll be on 60Cs also for Le Baguette while Dragon in Bear's Shadow. They are so far behind, though. 
With only two TCs, they have been struggling to even get to, you know, to even catch up in military count, so it's not been the best. Beautiful. There you are. Yeah. Good defense over here. Good defense over here. Now the defensive advantage is certainly working for Chris quite a bit. Jones is trying to go for the extra TCs, but he's getting uh, already spotted over here. You know, the score lead's got to be quite discouraging, to be fair, for Johnny Bearsell. If you're in this position, you take a look at the score, you probably think it's already over, so this kind of stuff, right? You get pushed away from your extra TCs, you're trying to catch up, and you cannot even get the TCs, so it's got to be extremely discouraging. He does manage to get the conversions over here, though, so that's good for Dragonstar. I'm taking a look at resources. It's looking fantastic for... Le Baguette, especially for Anatop, might be able to go up to the Imperial Age very soon, and it seems like he's gonna make a switch to Cavalry Archers right now, which will be a much stronger unit to go for, of course, and it's going to scale so much better for Hans. So let's see what we get. Bunch of crosses from Chris, though. This could be good. The thing, though, is with the extra TCs over the L for Anatol, for Sito, it's so much harder over here for Johnny Bershello to get any damage done. I'm just so glad that they've been able to survive this long, but they have so much catching up for, uh, to do. We have knights coming over from Sito as well. It, it doesn't seem like it's simple going to be possible for Johnny Bershello to catch up. With all these Kosos going down and the engagement being... Overall pretty efficient for the Baguette, plus the fact that Danatop's going up to the Imperial Age and very soon we'll get access to Heavy Cavalry Archer, Bracer Chemistry, whatnot. Parth and Tactics, right? It, it's going to be very, very hard for Johnny and Shadow to keep on defending. How many Archer ranges do we have for Anatop? He's producing from two, but he's got three and he's going for the fourth one, so he'll be on four Archer ranges in a moment. Stuff. Beautiful. Shot it. Tabish. Ashike. There you are. Good push. Up north. Looking good here. Make sure TC is not coming up over here for Chris at all and just let me keep on putting more pressure. Oh god, it's open! So much work to try and get the walls up over there, and now he overchopped. Now this uh, ah massacre, slaughterhouse over here with the knights taking on the villagers. Damn boy. Yeah. Imperial Age is here for Anatop, and the GG is going to be called, but again, looking extremely good. And the quarterfinals over here, going against my prediction by quite a bit. 2 0 so far. Good stuff. We'll take a look at game number three in a moment, of course, for the time being. Let's take a look at the achievements real quick. We're going to see a very nice KD for both Sito and Anatop. They, they were just completely dominating this game throughout the game. Fell behind the military count at some point, of course, but obviously it was because of the transition to the Imperial Age and they were able to start pushing back to the point where at the very end of the game, the military distribution was favoring the baguette still. For economy, we do have a strong economy for Sito and for Anatop. For the baguette in general, they do have a much larger than 50% villager distribution over here in, in the end. So, yeah, let's go back.
Let's jump into it right away. If you thought the games were good or the maps were good for the previous game already, take a look at this one. This is an amazing map. It's one of the, the maps that I like the most from the tournament as well. This is made by Huevo Coyoto. And we are going to have a double start, a double TC start over here for each player with one TC. Uh, uh, you know, around the outer area, and we have another TC around the inner area. So, taking a look at the civilizations and the potential matchups over here, we're going to start down south with Sito and Chris's civilization. So, Sito playing with Hindustanis will get faster attacking Camel Rider units. We also have for Hindustanis, we get for them cheaper villagers, 10, 15, 20, and 25% cheaper. And then besides that, we're going to see for this civilization extra armor on gunpowder units, plus one, plus one. So extra melee and extra pierce armor. Meanwhile, for the team bonus, they have bonus damage against buildings from camel, uh, rider units, light cover units, hazard units. And taking a look at the right-hand side over here from Chris, he's going to be playing with Burgundians instead. Okay. Which means access to eco upgrades 1 H earlier for a 50% food discount, as well as access to the cavalier upgrade in the castle age. They get a 50% discount on stable upgrades as well, and then uh, they will also get, in addition to that, 25% higher attack and gunpowder units, and for the team bonus relics will generate food in addition to gold. Can't remember the last time that I saw Bridge? Yeah, yeah. And also Capture Age got updated fairly recently, and it got. That the, the bridges got implemented in the minimap before, because before it would look like as if the center and the outside was disconnected on the minimap, but now it's a little bit more accurate. So, good stuff. Good job from the people from Capture Ridge, of course. So, taking a look up north, then we're gonna see John start playing with Bengalis. We're gonna have Anatol playing with Portuguese. With Portuguese, the yellow player is gonna have a 30% faster research and upgrades, as well as access to Fateri as in the Imperial Age. We'll see for them also a 20% gold discount. There we go. On military units and 10% extra HP on navy units, right? On ships. So that can be really, really strong for Portuguese. Besides that, for the team bonus, he'll provide also shared vision, which can be handy, but on this map, particularly speaking, it's not going to be quite as useful. So instead, if we take a look at Drown Star Civilization with Bengalis, he will get, first off, Two additional villagers spawning from each TC upon reaching a new age, which is fantastic. Besides that, we're going to have for them, elef uh, uh, I think elephant units will take 25% less bonus damage and they will be more resistant to conversion if I'm not mistaken. And then Bengalis, uh, what is the other thing that they do? Let me actually go and take a look because I don't think I have seen the civilization being used in, in a while actually, so I don't recall quite well. You know, from the newest civilizations, I think this is the one that I have, that I saw used the least. Yes, then the other bonus for them is the ships regenerate 15 HP per minute, which is interesting. For the team bonus, trade units will yield 10% food. In addition to gold, which is great. And let me take a look at the bands over here, because in any case, you would be expecting something like Dravidians on this map instead, maybe. But no, they, the Dravidians did not get banned at all. No, no. Okay. This is just a conscious decision for Jonstar to go uh, for Bengalis. Yeah, thank you, Selwink. Appreciate it. Hola. Village is already coming out for Sito. How's that TC going? Uh, it should be going, but not too much. <laughs> It's going up, but not by too much. Certainly, it's been a little bit of a rougher position for Johnny Bearshaw. They've been struggling over here a little bit more. Notice also, John starts going for walls already. Okay. Taking a look at the map a little bit more, you will see that we have four quadrants of water, right? So, if... Let's say we have water control over here for Dragon Star, and he's been collecting from the farms on the right-hand side. And he wanted to put pressure against Anatop, right, or or Sito, who are on the left-hand side. He would have to go all the way through the center in order to get to the south, or all the way through the center in order to get to the left. 
And it's simply not going to be possible early on because at the very center over here, the monument's going to be guarded by fast fire ships from Gaia. So this is this is really hard. This is um really hard to get across. Until you get to the castle age at the very least, you get to war wagons or sorry, war galleys, and you're able to take those units down. Or demolition ships or whatever. See Toto! Wait a moment! How did he manage to get this sneaky villager on the right hand side? He just walked through. And it doesn't seem like Chris realized about this. Oh guys, this can be huge. Village is here ready for him, he's going for a stable. I don't think Chris will realize about this at all. Yeah, I don't think so. Sito uh, might have shown the eagle over there for just one second, but he's he's got to act as if he's just scouting, uh, as if he's just gotten the eagle over here, right? As if he's not really trying to protect anything. Just act natural, man. Casual. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's getting away with this. You know, very soon he's gonna be on his way to the castle age too. Can he go for a, a blacksmith over here, maybe? Oh boy, oh boy, this is so tense. What is Chris doing? <gasps> he's going to spot it! He knows! Does he? I'm not really sure. He had vision of that villager for a little bit, but he might not have been paying attention because I think he just tasked the villager and he probably started watching uh, or he started looking a different place. Yeah? He's got no idea, guys! That is still one tad too far! Oh god. Proud pay with Bengalis because of the extra villages without TC start extra strong. That, that is a fair point, yeah. That should allow you to get ahead, right? Uh, Drown Star is already on a good amount of villages over here. Once he gets to the castle age, that's going to be already plus two. Dude, this is just incredible. Come on! <laughs> he can't see it. And yeah, we have scouts coming out. And here come the scouts! Now he can see the stable. But guess what? It's already too late. We'll see one village going down for sure. Yes, sir. If he plays his cards right, might be able to get three or even four villages over here. We're going to see more villages coming out from Chris to try and defend against this. But that's already a lot of losses. I'm going to see two villages going down. Almost three. He's going for the third. He got the third. Plus an extra scout coming out. It's so good. Let's uh, fix this real quick once again. Beautiful. And that's another one going down, guys. Four villagers dead already from Chris. Make that five, make that six. We have another stable over here. He's just walked away with the villager. Well, we see some gates coming up from Chris. He's got to realize the villager's still somewhere, right? So he's going over the right-hand side. And does he know about this already? He doesn't know about the stable. No, no. He's going for a defensive castle over here. But is that going to be enough? Rockford, thanks so much for the Prime Gaming sub. It's appreciated, man. I hope you're enjoying the content so far. Ternovadus has been quite a journey. And we are getting closer and closer to the end. This is just an incredible, incredible game for Sito specifically over here. It's just done so much damage with so little. It's just been so cheap. And I mean, check that out. Nine villagers dead already for Chris. You might see more villagers going down over here. Well, those scouts will eventually get cleaned up and the castle will eventually come back, uh, come up, right? That's another one. And that's going to be 10 villager losses already for Chris. So, Johnny Bear's Shadow, they have fallen behind already in work account a little bit. Still, it's finally going to be on his way to the castle age, which is great. And, uh, yeah. So you're playing tomorrow? Yes, the semi-final has already been scheduled for tomorrow between Stormy and whoever wins between the Baguette and Dragon in Bear's Shadow. Now, game is looking pretty good for the Baguette. I would say it's possible for Dragon in Bear's Shadow to come back over here, but it's not going to be particularly easy or straightforward. And unfortunately for Dragon in Bear's Shadow, the only way back into the series over here and the only way for them into the semi-final is going to be a reverse sweep by winning game number three and also taking games number four and five on Lebegate's home maps. So the game is not looking particularly close right now. Well, I mean, it, it's not terrible, right? It's not the worst, but it's been a lot of damage that Chris has taken. Fortunately, on a double TC start, it's not really going to take too long for you to catch up in villager count once again. 
Ideally, they will want to get some damage done on Dragon Burst Shadow. Uh, sorry, on the Baguette, though. So that it's not quite as hard for them to catch up. Because otherwise, they're just gonna be kind of banking on Le Baguette getting some idle TC time instead. So I would like to see some counter raids coming up if possible, but for the time being, it doesn't seem like it's going to happen right now. We see another forward castle coming up from Mana Top. And the Baguette, they are just looking so good, man. What a strong team. Fantastic. Beautiful, Castle Age is here. Horsey Toll, so now everyone's already up. We have uh, Armor Elephants coming out from Dragon Star. He's got Rathas coming out, which are so strong. We have already tested Rathas quite extensively uh, during the preview for the DLC, and we established they are pretty darn strong. <laughs> you do need a good amount of units, though. And right now, we don't really have too many. I, I do like the Custilier edition, though, from Chris. But yeah, this is a very nice push, and still, Anta with, with a very, very scary amount of organ guns is going to keep on going higher and higher as he's already cleaned out the fast fire ships at the center. Let's see if he'll be able to defend himself against the elephants over there. We see a second castle come up for Chris. Y bailo. Oh boy, he's actually running out of resources. Can Dragon Star take this one? That's going to be one out of two that he needs to take. As long as we have access to castles for Anathop, it's going to keep on going for more organ guns. Okay, okay, good Quake Walls. He will end up sacrificing one villager, not quite. Yeah, yeah, and the castle has gone down already. So now Dragon Star should be targeting the second one. He's got another castle coming up himself to double up his wrath as production. Then he can go down south. He's trying to free up some space, taking the ancestral monastery. There we go. Beautiful. Imperial H is coming up now for Dragon Star faster than anybody else, although Anatop's gonna be able to click up very soon himself. So those putting a lot of pressure over here with camels alone. I do like Chris. Being patient over here and waiting for the units to, to charge up before taking the engagement. Unfortunately, he's still going to get cleaned up or pushed away over here, though. The left-hand side up north, Dragon Star is going right up against Anatop. So, he sort of, does he not? He should know about the castle, right? He knows about the castle, he's just not going for it. So, Anatop can keep on going for more and more organ guns, and it doesn't seem like Dragon Star will be able to do too much about that. Just trying to go up against Anatop's economy instead, and it's going to take a hot minute, obviously, for him to even break through the defense over here, the gates, and get to the back PC. So I think Anatop's going to be fine for the time being. He's going out to the Imperial Age as well. If he needed, he could go for extra TCs on, on the back, and he's going to be fine. Meanwhile, right now, we see him try to go for a castle. And Chris's side of the map. And check this out. No way that is the one villager, is it? Come on, Zito, get out of here! What? One villager castle coming out for Sito. Dude, if he ends up doing damage with this, I'm just going to freak out. Good amount of Rathas, good amount of organ guns. There we go. Another castle coming out for Anatop, so... He got pushed away from here, he's just going to relocate the castle back to where he had the first one originally, or close to it. Where he had the, the in-between where the first castle and the TC were. Fantastic. Up north, we see Ghulams coming over from Sito. Ghulams! That's interesting to see. Actually... 
I, I don't think this would work against Rathas, right? Because you switch them over to melee mode and they should dominate. Rustak level annoying with the villager, yeah. <laughs> Completely agreed. Castle's coming up now for Anatop, third castle, so he'll increase production potential by 50% further. And Imperial Age will be here for Sito very soon, so he'll get access to trebuchets from the castle over here. I'm so surprised still, because the moment Chris realized about the stables over here, he should have tried to get the villager, right? He should have known there was a villager somewhere, but he never went for it. And, and now it's too late, now Sito's going to get unbelievable... But true, he gets the castle out. Come on, man. This villager is just... Should open a YouTube channel, how to build a, a castle single-handedly in the middle of the jungle. With adobe bricks. There you are. Castle's going down over here. So, good job from Dragonstar. Taking the castle over there. We still have two for Anatop, so he's gonna be fine himself. He's got Terrishes coming out, too. Yeah, Jalonster is kind of bringing this game back for his team. A little bit over here, Chris is still in a in a little bit of a rough spot though. The camel's coming out for Sito. Now we have Cherry over here from Sito. Come on, man! <laughs> so annoying. Extra stables as well, it should be able to come in, so we're gonna see Gulams and Camels coming over from Sito, now that he's in the Imperial Age, he's finished researching Heavy Camel Rider, he's got Play Bar and Armor coming up, and very soon we'll see even Imperial Camel come in, so that's gonna be so hard for Dragonstar to defend against when he's actively trying to push and top away from the, the center of the map. Beautiful. The Drowning Bear Shadow even have a counter to Camel. Well, I mean, I guess this would be quite strong in range mode. The Rathas. In Burgundians, when the Custody are charged, they are actually pretty strong. They can take on Camels no problem, but... Yeah, they need to be charged up, and we need a good amount of units, and right now, I don't think we have too many. Oh, we have only five clues here. Uh, the button counters everything. The switch. Do you want him to flip the switch? How many villagers does Chris have right now? 112. Not ideal. He does have castles and he's going up to the Imperial Age, so I guess we could see it. Interestingly enough, though, Drowning Bear's Shadow, a little bit ahead in population. Yeah, and Rathas are good. Rathas will be taking on camels on a good amount of units if they are in ranged mode for sure because they can kite the, kite the units. These are still pretty uh, weak, right? Against ranged units. You just gotta be careful. He's, he's gotta, you know, control the units because if you just get... Yeah. If the camels over here get to the Rathas, then the Rathas do go down. Yeah, it's not been the best unit control for Dragonstar over here. I imagine it's probably still paying attention forward. Yeah, around this area. They're still open, by the way, and we have three, four uh, stables, so Sito can keep on sending units forward. He doesn't even need to go for camels. If he wanted to kill very well, just go for, like, like cavalry. But camels are so strong. These are Imperial Camel Riders already. That the sea should crumble from Giant Star very soon. Me and Johnny Bear's Shadow, they want to believe. They still ha have a higher population overall. And now everyone's finally in the Imperial Age. Uh. 
There we go. Beautiful. Good defense over here for Drownstar. Good defense over here for Drownstar. His team is staying alive because of him mainly. Although we do still have some momentum for the Baguette. They are starting to pick up some steam for with the trebuchets. Still a very scary amount of organ guns. At this point, these guys are already elite. So much, much harder to push back, of course. And Gas goes down over there, though. Already for Chris. It's only on 121 villagers, so going for the switch right now would be a little bit too risky. And wouldn't really work too well against the organ guns anyway. So he would still need some support from Jalancer. And Jalancer has been struggling to keep up. Even to contain Sito's push, and Sito is starting to push down south over here as well. So he's taken on both Dragon Bear's Shadows players from behind. And know this why? Because of this! The one villager! MVP! Come on, raise your hammer, champion. I'm gonna call him Bob from this point onwards. Bob the Builder. The monument is going to produce resources, yes, I think it's 90 gold per minute. If I'm not wrong. Yeah, and to think that Chris knew about the stables, he should have tried to find the villager, right? But I'm really sure he forgot about it. What a fantastic game. Very good engagement over here though, Dragon Star does get a good amount of Rathas already up. And you know, fully upgraded elite Rathas will take on Organ Guns even, but right now Dragon Star is missing a bunch of upgrades. He still does not have elite Ratha. He's going right now for Pikes. Meanwhile, we already have elite Organ Guns. Oh, yeah. Still a scary amount of units on the right hand side from Sito. He was trying to go for the wall over here. I'm not really sure why he stopped going for it. But yeah, I guess it doesn't matter at this point anymore. He's got enough units to defend his position. Fantastic. Beautiful. Working pretty well over here for the baguette. Yeah, it's starting to get a little bit harder for John and Bill's Shadows to hold on over here. Johnson doesn't even have enough population space. It's Elite Token Gun in, by the way. Yeah, Elite Token Gun is in. We already checked this. Oh! Oh, but the GG's coming up! We did have incredible momentum coming up from the baguette though. So it's 100% understandable. And we were still... Oh, we, we finally got to Elite Rathas. So, uh, yeah. From what I remember, when we, te when, when, when we tried the Rathas, I think they actually came out on, on top against Organ Guns. If I'm not mistaken. But they were fully upgraded. And over here, Johnstar took a long time. To get to fully upgrade it himself, so uh, it, it was pretty rough. The Baguette is now taking the series over here with a clean 3 0 sweep. Meanwhile, if we take a look at the achievements, what do we get over here? We're gonna see for military a nice KD for Anatop. We're gonna have a nice KD for Sito over here as well. And yeah, and Sito's villager, man. <laughs> MVP, incredible, incredible villager. Fantastic sneak for the red player. Much stronger economy as well for Lebaguet. We're gonna see for society a much higher work account for them towards the end of the game. So we are going to have um we're going to have a, a, a stronger resource collection rate, you know, from this point onwards for Lebaguet even. So good stuff. Lebaguet does move on to the semifinals then where they'll be facing Swami, who have been waiting for an opponent for a while.